I, I recently got my hands on some button matrix. I've got two of these. They're really cheap, like a dollar fifty or something like that. These ones are the cheap ones. You can get ones with actual numbers on them, and uh, you can use a keypad.h library to figure out which button is pressed. But my issue with these things is that they have eight pins. Um, there's eight pins because you got four rows and four columns, and when you press one of the buttons, then the corresponding the button's corresponding row and column pins are connected. They, they close a the contact, so then current flows between those two. And you connect eight wires to your Arduino through eight of your Arduino's limited pins, and you can figure out which one of these 16 buttons is pressed. Um, as I said, my issue with this is that it's got eight wires, which to me seems excessive. Like you don't need eight wires to figure out 16 buttons. It's not that complicated. So what I got here is um, I made this this app. This app here uses a best, or it's a greedy best first search algorithm to figure out what resistors I need to make a voltage divider. Okay, a voltage divider. Essentially, what you do is you um, like, let's say I had this. This is a diagram of an example of a two by two matrix. Let's say I had a four by four matrix. You can play with this. It's interactive. You can change the resistors here. So you have four resistors. You have VCC connected up here at the top, and it goes through four resistors that are connected to the four different rows, and the four columns are connected to four more resistors. Those resistors are tied together to a common resistor tied to ground. Now, when you measure the voltage between the common resistor and the column resistors, then you, uh, you can figure out which button was pressed if you have the, uh, the appropriate resistors lined up. Because with the, uh, the appropriate resistors, when you press... So this is, uh, let's look at this voltage divider here. So you have a voltage divider is when you press one of the buttons, as I said previously, one of the, the, uh, current, the, the current flow is between the corresponding column and row pins. So when you have current flowing between those two, you can put resistors between them and figure out the combination of resistors that will give you a different voltage for each button and then have your Arduino test the voltage level on one pin, a single pin, one pin. This, this point here is connected to the Arduino. So you have ground, VCC, and one wire, just one, not eight, one wire connected to your Arduino. You know, sure, you have ground and VCC, but there's only one of your control pins is being monopolized by this 16 button controller. So you have one pin to rule them all. And so you collect, so if you have the correct combination of resistors, then you can generate voltages at, at the Arduino pin here that are different for each button. But it's kind of complicated because, I mean, you can, you have a RC is this one here is the common resistor. RXs are these ones here, okay, at the bottom for each column. And RY, 0, 1, 2, 3, are these ones here for each of the rows. So you can change these values here. When I change this value here to 11, this is actually another button to reset it. Right now, we're not going to use that. So you can, this is 11. These are all ones right now. You can, this, this is an interactive interface here. You can just change these values, do what you want with them, and try to find values that in combination together will give you a voltage divider that will, you know, figure out which button was pressed and have a unique voltage for each of the buttons. When you have a unique voltage for each of the buttons, let's see if I can tweak something here. Um, it's kind of difficult to guess. It's really just guesswork at this point, you know, because you're trying to tweak these different values. When I press this vel when I press this button here, and this is the voltage that appears at the Arduino's uh, analog pin. So I press one of the buttons, I get 0 0.36, 36 millivolts. Okay, but um, like see here, when you put all these voltages here together and you um, put them in in order, in ascending order, then you compare two adjacent voltages. You try to find voltages that are different. Okay, and 
you try to get differences between them all. And so the, the nearest, the one that are, the two voltages that are closest together are zero point, or just one millivolt separate, and that would be these two. So these, these two here, 42 millivolts, and this one's 43 millivolts. So there's one here that's 42, and the other's 40, this one's 43, this one's 42. So it's one, one. So if I, if I say, let's tweak this one here, I could probably change this and try to get better values. But it's really difficult to just tweak it like that. So what I did is I wrote an algorithm that tried all possibilities from 0 to 5,000 for nine resistors. And it turned out trying that exhaustive search for all the possibilities would take about 40 years. So that was just crazy. So I narrowed it down to 0 to 20 ohm resistors for the nine resistances. And I still have, I have a Windows 7 computer in another room that's been working on that puzzle for like 10 days. And it's nowhere near finished. It's going to take months. It's just ridiculous. So then I thought, well, this is crazy. Let's do something else. So I narrowed the scope down. I, what I did is I, I, I created this search algorithm that feeds itself. Okay, so it, it's, I didn't, like, why? Well, I just invented this myself. I don't know, like, I didn't know what it was, but... In any case, so um, it has a, a middle value that it starts from, say two, and then it ranges plus or minus two, so from zero to four, for all nine values. When it exhausts all those possibilities, it takes the best result and it seeds it back into the algorithm as the best results being the middle range. So middle range is plus or minus two. And it turns out that I went to the stack overflow and ask them like what is this like i made this what is this what is this called and someone told me and i'll just call it that because they said it's a greedy best first search algorithm so it just it feeds itself and it just progressively gets more precise as it goes along and uh, the way i've got it implemented is it grows so it's um this is the growth rate of 1.2 right now i've got got it this uh, this is the this is it this is it this is the uh, greedy best first search algorithm and it tries all the possibilities I seeded initially with values of one two three four five six and one two three four five six for both the RX and RY series and I think it was two for the common resistor and then I seeded it with those values and now it's it's trying to solve it um, like. I've solved a few, this thing's solved a few already, and I know that that's basically, you know, the gist of it. Like, they, they're different by, you know, they increase like that. So, in any case, I seeded it with those values, and I just started. Now, this is the zeroth iteration. When it reaches, um, when this value here reaches 13, this value here reaches over, over here. This, uh, these are the RYs, these are the RXs. It exhaustively tries all the possibilities and finds the best result, and then it seeds itself again and it starts over. And so that's the greedy best first search algorithm. And when it finds a solution, then you can load it and have a look at it. I'm just going to stop and start again here. Okay, all right, so. So this is the greedy best first search algorithm. I've got it working on a six by six right now. I can pause it and restart it and I can reset it and set whatever values I want here and just do whatever I want. There's a directory here. You can tell it which directory to save it in. And then it's, uh, when, when you tell it which directory to save it in, what it does is, this is kind of important. Um, it saves it. Uh, where you tell it. So, like for example here, when I was working on the 4x4 matrix, which is more relevant to this article because I was working with that, uh, the, the matrix I just showed you is 4x4. So, first I had to solve this puzzle here, 4x4, and I had it solve this puzzle, and it came up with 217 different solutions. Now, let's have a look at one of the later ones here. Um, well, this, this is one of the solutions here. I can you can look at the file here. These are just text files, and this is the solution that it came up with. This here is the information that it needs to load into the calculator. So well, I'm just going to do that. So now I just loaded. This is uh, example 214, and that's the file. So this is where I saved it. That's what the file looks like. It's actually a text file, but I told it to. Uh, so I got my computer figuring out. To, anyway, it's a text file. So. Um, 
go into here and if I press the load button, okay, the load button here, and we go to 4x4, and it was 214, doesn't really matter which one, I'll just load any of them. I'll load this one here, and uh, these are the values that it came up with. And that's crazy, like it's 430,728 ohm resistor for the common resistor, which is like inconvenient because I don't have that much resistance on hand. And that's, you know, for 5 volts, it's probably a little excessive. So I'm going to go down to one of the more previous. These are numbered. Um, you can see that the name is uh, valid solution 4x4. Four four. This is the, the 215 here is the file number, and then this is the value the minimum value difference that it found, 1.31, 131 milliamps. So those values, those variances that we were talking about a minute ago. So 131 milliamps is what it found there. It keeps finding the same milliamp and pretty cl close to it. And so eventually, I'm just going to load the one that I implemented. This one is 50. I implemented this one. So I actually built um, a voltage divider. So here, I'll show you. Turn the camera around this voltage divider here, this thing here, um, it's only got three wires, okay? It's got the VCC, the ground, and the analog pin connected to the Arduino. Um, this is a mega, but you know, even though this one's got like 60 odd or however many pins connecting to it, it's still a waste to use eight freaking pins so in any case I got that so I'm gonna sh we're gonna look at that in a minute so like right now um, let's look at the screen again and uh, this over here is this is the solution that it came up with so you can see that the variance is 127 milliamps so that's beautiful 127 milliamps is great because the Arduino can detect 5 milliamps so 127 is like way abundant so there's 127, like the least, that means that the least difference between two different buttons is uh, buttons four and five here in this sequence. They're buttons uh, 2.185 and 2.312, okay. These two voltages here add up to, the difference between them is one point is 127 millivolts okay so that's the least these two are the ones that are closest together okay so that's this value here all right the 127 so when you press all these different buttons you get different voltages so you press this button you get 100 1.523 that, that one's that's the voltage you get here like that now these values here are not exactly what i used to implement the the, the one i built okay um, the one I built, I actually multiplied this here as a factor. So because the voltage divider is really just a ratio between resistors, you can multiply all the resistors by a common factor and still get the same ratio. Okay. So if these resistors are not what you have conveniently on hand, you can multiply the factor and get different values that will all result in the same voltage divider. It's all these values like it changes one resistor at a time. This reacts one resistor at a time. And what I did is I, this is actually 2.0. There's the decimal missing here. It's 2.0. So this is twice what the original values. This is the original values that the uh, algorithm found. And what I used is twice that and then tweaked it. So you can still tweak these. Okay. So I'll look at this. Okay, this here, put this over here, put that there, all right, so all right, now, these values here on the right is a, is an image, if I press copy here, it'll give me a copy, so I can just press copy, I just press copy there, and it'll paste the image that's on the screen onto the clipboard then you just press paste and that's the image you get here and that's just a copy of it okay so you can just copy this image here by pressing this button here and there's a magical arduino code button of course because <laughs> can't live without one of those and so here um 
So these are the values that are actually used, 377. So if I change these values here, 377, all right, and I change, I set them to exactly what I had on hand, and this is the reason why I'm changing these values is because the physical value of the resistors that I had on hand were different from the ones that the algorithm came up with. So I change these values, I set them to exactly the values of the resistors that I connected with my Arduino, and then I press Arduino code, okay? Now this, okay, copies, it creates, it generates code, Arduino code, and it pastes it onto the clipboard, and here, what I do is I say paste, and here's the code, all right? So this is what the code looks like. It just, it, my app wrote this code, okay? So it creates a point class, and then it does these handles here, and these. this is the handle voltage there, and it returns a point. So X and Y values of the buttons, you can do whatever you want with that, but you can change this if you like, but anyway. So it gives you an X and Y value for the buttons, and all these buttons there, because if you recall, these voltage values here, they're all scrambled up and they're not necessarily in any particular order and it's a bit of a mess and writing this code would be a major hassle but with this app it's like <laughs> cut and paste right no problem the real difficulty is just you know telling it to solve the puzzle for you and it solves the puzzle so it uh, writes all this code and then I just you know I say Arduino Omega make sure the ports connected we're all set my wires are connected I say upload and um, I'm going to save it and just boom. Now it compiles and gives it, you know, takes a minute to compile it. And um, so here, when we loop here, it's going to notice here the delay is five milliamps. There's, a, there's only a five milliamp delay. I see another a few of the uh, solutions online. They're like delaying to set and reset and change the time. It's like they had to like set digital print and digital write values to the different output pins and it was just really slow. It was taking a long time just to, you know, test the, the buttons. And this one here, the delay is five milliamps. So here it's connected, all right? And I'm going to, um, okay, so now it's telling me the zeroth button. I'm going to turn to this button thing again, all right? So here, can you see the buttons? These are the buttons here. So we look at the screen. I'm going to press these buttons. This is top button there, and I released it, getting zero zero. That's the next button over there, and this button here. So every time I press a button, it reports which button was pressed, and it's super fast. It's like it's there's no delay, and uh, it's one button at a time, like any other. Even the keypad library only uses one button at a time so it's not like you're losing the ability to press more than one button by using this uh, this matrix because you can only press one button at a time anyway so instead of like, what you're losing is seven wires so you get rid of seven wires use this app plug it in it's like bing bang bada boom it's like one wire and it's done it's just like it's so much better it's just ridiculous So that's my voltage divider button matrix calculator app. And it took me about 12 days to write with the initial like floundering around problems with that uh, search algorithm thing. And I didn't intend on creating an app to, to do all that, but it turned out pretty good. So I'm quite pleased with it. Now I've got other projects in mind and um, I'll talk to you about those when I get them done. See ya.